Dear brethren, on this most sacred night, in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the Church calls upon her sons and daughters, gathered throughout the world, to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's pastoral solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end. Alpha and Omega. All time belongs to him and all the ages. To him be glory and power to every age forever. Amen. By his holy and glorious wounds, may the Lord guard us and protect us. May the light of Christ, rising in glory, dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. Exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud a mighty king's triumph. Be glad. Let earth be glad as glory floods her, ablaze with the light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad 
knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, with ardent love of mind and heart, and with devoted service of our voice, to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ our Lord, his Son, his only begotten who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the Eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. Be his then the feast of our Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt, and made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banish the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. O oh, wonder of your humble care for us, O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave you gave away your son. O truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O happy fault, that earned for you so glorious a Redeemer. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, Restores innocence to the fallen and joy to mourners. O oh, truly blessed night, when things of earth or heaven are wedded to things of earth and divine to the human. On this, your night of grace, O oh, Holy Father, accept this candle a solemn offering, the work of bees and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift of your most holy church. Therefore, O Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honour of your name, may persevere and to overcome the darkness of this night. 
Receive it as a pleasing fragrance, and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star. The one morning star who never sets. Christ your Son, who coming back from the dead domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Dear brethren, now that we've begun our, begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people, and in these, the last days, has sent his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God said, Let us make man in our own image, in the likeness of ourselves, and let them be masters of the fish of the sea, the birds of heaven, the cattle, all the wild beasts, and all the reptiles that crawl upon the earth. God created man in the image of himself. In the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. God blessed them, saying to them, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and conquer it. Be masters of the fish of the sea, the birds of heaven and all living animals on the earth. God said, See, I give you all the seed-bearing plants that are upon the whole earth, and all the trees with seed-bearing fruit. This shall be your food. To all wild beasts, all birds of heaven, and all living reptiles on the earth, I give all the foliage of plants for food. And so it was. God saw all that he has made, and indeed, it was Very good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. O God, who wonderfully created human nature and still more wonderfully redeemed it, grant us, we pray, to set our minds against the enticements of sin, that we may merit to retain eternal joys. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. Abraham, Abraham, he called. Here I am, he replied. Take your son, God said, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him a burnt sacrifice on a mountain, and I will point it out to you. When they arrived at the place God had pointed out to him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood. Then he stretched out his hand and seized the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven. Abraham, Abraham, he said. I am here, he replied. Do not raise your hand against the boy, the angel said. Do not harm him. For now I know you fear God. You have not refused me your son, your only son. Then looking up, Abraham saw a ram caught by its horns in a bush. Abraham took the ram and offered it as a burnt offering in place of his son. The angel of the Lord called Abraham a second time from heaven. I swear by my own self, it is the Lord who speaks. Because you have done this, because you have not refused me your son, your only son, I will shower blessings on you. I will make your descendants as many as the stars of heaven and the grains of sand on the seashore. Your descendants shall gain possession of the gates of their enemies. All the nations of the earth shall bless themselves by your descendants as a reward for your obedience. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O God, Supreme Father of the faithful, who increased the children of your promise by pouring out the grace of adoption throughout the whole world, and who through the Paschal mystery make your servant Abraham, father of nations, as once you swore, grant we pray that your people may enter worthily into the grace to which you have called them. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me so? Tell the sons of Israel to march on. For yourself, raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and part it for the sons of Israel to walk through the sea on dry ground. I, for my part, will make the hearts of the Egyptians so stubborn that they will follow them. So shall I win myself glory at the expense of Pharaoh, of all his army, his chariots, his horsemen. And when I have won glory for myself at the expense of Pharaoh and his chariots and his army, the Egyptians will learn that I am the Lord. Then the angel of the Lord, who marched at the front of the army of Israel, changed station and moved to the rear. The pillar of cloud changed station from the front to the rear of them and remained there. It came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. The cloud was dark and the night passed without the armies drawing any closer the whole night long. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove back the sea with a strong easterly wind all night and he made dry land of the sea. The waters parted and the sons of Israel went on dry ground right into the sea, walls of water to right and to the left of them. The Egyptians gave chase after them. They went right into the sea. All Pharaoh's horses, his chariots and his horsemen. In the morning watch, the Lord looked down on the army of the Egyptians from the pillar of fire and of cloud and threw the army into confusion. He so clogged their chariot wheels that they could scarcely make headway. Let us flee from the Israelites, the Egyptians cried. The Lord is fighting for them against the Egyptians. Stretch out your hand over the sea, the Lord said to Moses, that the waters may flow back on the Egyptians and their chariots and their horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and, as day broke, the sea returned to its bed. The fleeing Egyptians marched right into it, and the Lord withdrew the Egyptians in the very middle, overthrew the Egyptians in the middle of the sea. The returning waters overwhelmed the chariots and the horsemen of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them was left. But the sons of Israel marched through the sea on dry ground, walls of water to the right and to the left of them. That day, the Lord rescued Israel from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. Israel witnessed the great act that the Lord had performed against the Egyptians, and the people venerated the Lord. They put their faith in the Lord and in Moses his servant. It was then that Moses and the sons of Israel sang this song in honour of the Lord.
Let us pray. O God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor even in our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you bring about in the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, O come to the water, all you who are thirsty, though you have no money, come, buy corn without money and eat, and at no cost, wine and milk. Why spend money on what is not bread, nor wages on what fails to satisfy? Listen, listen to me, and you will have good things to eat and rich food to enjoy. Pay attention, come to me, listen, and your soul will live. With you I will make an everlasting covenant, out of the favours promised to David. See, I have made of you a witness to the peoples, a leader and a master of the nations. See, you will summon a nation you never knew, those unknown will, become, will come hurrying to you for the sake of the Lord your God, of the Holy One of Israel, who will glorify you. Seek the Lord while he is still to be found. Call to him while he is still near. Let the wicked man abandon his way, the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn back to the Lord who will take pity on him to our God who is rich in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways are not your ways. It is the Lord who speaks. Yes, the heavens are as high above the earth as my ways are above your ways, my thoughts above your thoughts. Yes, as the rain and the snow come down from the heavens, and do not return without watering the earth, making it yield, and giving growth to provide seed for the sower and bread for the eating. So the word that goes from my mouth does not return to me empty without carrying out my will and succeeding in what it was sent to do. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, 
sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in every kind of virtue. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. us pray. O God, who made this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption, so that renewed in body and mind we may render you undivided service. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized in his death. In other words, when we were baptized, we went into the tomb with him and joined him in death. So that as Christ was raised from the dead by the Father's glory, we too might live a new life. If in union with Christ we have imitated his death, we shall also imitate him in his resurrection. We must realize that our former selves have been crucified with him to destroy this sinful body and to free us from the slavery of sin. When a man dies, of course, he is finished with sin. But we believe that having died with Christ, we shall return to life with him. Christ, as we know, having been raised from the dead, will never die again. Death has no power over him anymore. When he died, he died once for all to sin. So his life now is life with God. And in that way, you too must consider yourselves to be dead to sin but alive for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. After the Sabbath and towards dawn on the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala and the other Mary went to visit the sepulchre. And all at once there was a violent earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled away the stone 
and sat on it. His face was like lightning, his robe white as snow. The guards were so shaken, so frightened of him, that they were like dead men. But the angel spoke, and he said to the women, There is no need for you to be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said he would. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is now going before you to Galilee. It is there you will see him. Now I have told you, filled with awe and great joy, the women came quickly away from the tomb and ran to tell the disciples. And there, coming to meet them, was Jesus. Greetings, he said. And the women came up to him and, falling down before him, clasped his feet. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers that they must leave for Galilee. They will see me there. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. What a very happy and blessed Easter to all of you in the risen Lord Jesus. And quite simply, this is the event that makes all the difference and that defines everything. After the days of Lent, which have been an especially dark time for us and for the world, we have the light and the joy and the energy that comes from the promise of the new life that Jesus our Saviour brings. It doesn't mean an end to suffering or to hardship or to misery, but it does give it a different meaning and above all hope, hope that what God has promised has come about. In a word, the resurrection is the gospel. It is the good news. That's why in the beginning, they didn't talk about the teachings or the miracles of Jesus. They spoke about Jesus risen from the dead. And that's what we preach year in and year out in every generation. And on this Easter, above all, we do this with a great intensity, with a greater conviction and a deeper hope. What the resurrection is, according to the gospel and the Christian faith, is that when those holy women and the apostles went to the tomb and found it empty, it wasn't so much that someone had broken in, but someone had broken out. They enter the tomb and they see that young man in white who tells them that Jesus is not there because he has been raised up. The women are terrified and they're shaken out of their wits and they find it difficult to speak. And this wasn't wistful nostalgia on their part because they knew and they believed that in this tomb the laws of nature had been reversed. Here God was doing something entirely new. Now, the most basic fact of life is our death is death itself. And it determines in so many ways the way we live. But these women see that through the power of God, even that great fact has been undone. The resurrection of Jesus means that he comes back from bodily death in the way that he foretold he would. Not like Lazarus who would come back to life and live only to die again, Jesus comes back from the dead in such a way that death itself is conquered. Jesus Christ came on earth to fight everything that God hates. All those things that prevent us from being fully alive, 
And this includes disease, sickness, and death itself. He entered into the dysfunction of the world and fought it. He fought even the sickness and the disease that so hampers us now. The final enemy, the greatest power, is death itself. This is the final enemy that he fights and overcomes. And this is what Easter is, the final victory over the enemy that is death, so that we can no longer be afraid of it or be restricted by it. The altar outside our church in the memorial garden has a figure of Jesus as the good shepherd standing over the graves of those who are buried there. With the abbreviated Greek inscription on the front of the altar, Jesus Christus Nica, Jesus Christ Victorious. This is the reason Easter Day is the real Victory Day. Of course, no one's prepared to give their lives for a memory, for a myth, some speculation, or even just a good, nice person. But people will give their lives for the truth, for a real person who has come back from the dead and has come to save us. And that is what we're celebrating this night It's what the church has been celebrating for over 20 centuries. Many people throughout the church have been preparing for initiation into the faith for the Easter sacraments at this time. Let's remember them especially this evening. Remember those in our own parish who have to wait until there are more felicitous times when this can happen. But whenever and wherever we are, We can invite Jesus into our lives again through faith, through spiritual communion, through a deeper love of family and neighbour, that the resurrection of our Saviour may be for us that continued source of hope, of encouragement and of new beginning. Thanks be to God, we have this faith this knowledge and this desire to persevere in what has been promised to us. And let us look at Mary, who was the first, we believe, by tradition, to have seen the risen Jesus. Let's ask her in the prayers of our own antiphon to pray for us now to God. Alleluia. Dear friends in Christ, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism, by which we, were one, we once renounced Satan and his works, and promised to serve God in his holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works, I do. And all his empty promises, I do. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may by the working of your power bring us to the healing of eternity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this night, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Sanctus, 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 Nominus, Neo Sanctus, 
Most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, and all those who hold into the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servant. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise. Or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them. For the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being. And paying their homage to you, the eternal God living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh. And in communion with those whose memory we venerate especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, our spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Clatus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Laudence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you, also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granted them the forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray in all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light and peace. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, open your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Machalinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, for whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. We toli his peccata mundi miserere nobis anus dei qui toli his peccata mundi miserere
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this paschal sacrament one in mind and heart. 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the final blessing of the Mass, wherever you are, I want to wish you a very blessed Easter. And these greetings and my prayers above all go to all those of you who are at home, either in your families or perhaps alone, isolated and feeling lonely. I want you to ask for the grace and the presence of the risen Christ to fill your heart and your soul this Easter tide, so that we may not lose hope, so that we may cling on to our Lord with greater earnestness and greater fidelity. And in greeting all of you, I want to offer a special prayer to all those who are sick and suffering at this time, those who look after them, those who are engaged in any way in the care of the sick, and to know that you are remembered here, particularly at the altar, every day. And please do assure the sick and the suffering that we are praying for them, uh, if you can. Remind you, the Mass tomorrow is at 11.30. And there's some adoration of the Blessed Sacrament of Benediction tomorrow evening at 5.30. And you'll find the times of Mass throughout the coming week on the parish website. And also by signing up to receive the newsletter electronically. Thank you all very much. And I wish you a very good night and God's blessing on you now. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, Alleluia, Alleluia. Regina Celi, Letale, Alleluia, we are Quemeru is the Potar, Alleluia, Resurrexit, Sicut Dix, Alleluia, Ora Pro Nobis. Amen.